Hey everybody, this is Fran Frischella, draft expert and basketball junkie. To everybody who's watching, let's get our friends at General Manager Games the subscribers they deserve. Just press that red subscriber button and immerse yourself in sports AI through GM Games content. And on Twitter, it's GM underscore games. Let's get after it. Let's go. 2021, told you guys I'd be bringing you this. Uh, I was hoping to do it last week. Uh, had to do a little bit of work. Um, as you can see, if you take a look up here in the top right, I've gone back to 2020. Uh, this is the, the live, like not final version. I'm sure they'll still work if, if things show up. I'm sure they're still working on the game. But this is the retail version. We're out of the early access. Uh, so this is... This is Draft Day Sports Pro Football 2021. Uh, since you know we ran into some issues before, I was learning the game. Uh, a number of different reasons. Some different mods have come available. Uh, there's just a whole lot of reasons, but um, I ended up just wanting to to go ahead and start fresh and really be able to take control of this team and show you guys the whole thing. Because I know last time I uh, skipped some of the some of the steps you didn't see it live i think i simmed an entire season without you guys seeing so we're just going to sort of reset here we're taking over the cincinnati Bengals, uh basically over this past summer prior to this current season that's going so we're going to take we're going to take over the cincinnati Bengals, same as before uh, we are in a free agency period but uh, first we need to go and manage this roster because we've got something like 70 players, and we can only carry 52 or 53. Uh, so we're going to need to do some roster management. Now, at first, let me just show you this. Not only do we have these great graphics, I renamed the teams. I set the stadium names, the turf, and all that stuff. Uh, those are all user edits. These logos were a download. If you want to get the real world mod with the logos, you can find that on the Wolverine Studios forums in their mod section. Uh, you can see, we can bounce out at standings and you can check out uh, all these different teams. I've renamed all of them. This isn't how it comes default. I've done this. Uh, the graphics for the NFC and AFC, all of the team graphics, all that stuff is all from the real world mod. So you'll have to download that if you want to get it into your game. But you can see it looks sharp. Uh, and then, if you guys are on the on the Wolverine Studios forums, or if you're around the GM Games Discord, you'll know Chris put some serious work into uh, some some real player picks. So if we click on this, now we've got uh, Joe Burrow's actual picture. Let me get my cursor off his face there. Uh, we got Joe Burrow's actual picture. I, I think he got these off NFL.com or something like that. Uh, I, I don't know exactly. I, I wasn't involved in all the details of it, but the picks look great. I believe they're in here for every player. Check out Joe Mixon. There he is. You know, we won't have any more of these uh, surprises where somebody just looks uh, terribly not like themselves. Uh, so, we got the real world player picks. We got the mod. We got the logos. We got it all, guys. So, we're starting fresh uh, right here with your Cincinnati Bengals in the offseason. So, as I said, we, ha we are in a free agency period. But if you look here at our cap... Uh, we're bouncing right off the cap. And, and, you know, with in this, if you take a look here at a staff, uh, I'm set up as the GM, obviously, and then I've got a different head coach, offensive coordinator, and defensive coordinator. So rather than getting too far in-depth with the strategy, the training, and all that, I'm going to let my coaches handle that stuff. If they're terrible, I'll just fire them and hire somebody else. So I have a little bit of plausible deniability, right? Uh, so I'm not going to get too deep into that. Uh, I'm sure... It's probably going to be set up very similar to like what I do with college basketball. You know, you just you find a strategy, you stick with it, and you build around that. So you can see here, our head coach, his preferred offense is a power hybrid. I would assume you know that's that's big lineman, that's running the football, that sort of thing, and that fits in with how I like to build a team. Now, if you watch the couple of streams I did previously. Uh, I was really just sort of playing around with things and getting a feel for it. And I think I mentioned in one of them, that's not how I really build a team. Uh, for me, you know, basketball teams are the point guard and center, but everything else is up the middle. Baseball, you build up the middle. Football, you build up the middle, which is essentially the lines. So offensive line, defensive line. And when we start going through this roster, you're going to see the Bengals are atrocious at those spots. Uh, they've 
got a nice young quarterback uh, who hopefully will grow as we move forward. We've got good enough runners. Joe Mixon's solid. Uh, Giovanni Bernard can do some things. Uh, A.J. Green's probably getting close to the end of his usefulness. Uh, we do have Tyler Boyd. He'll be solid. Uh, let's just let's just jump into it, guys. Uh, um, a whole lot of running my yap just to tell you uh, I'm just going to GM it. <laughs> I'm not getting into the strategy and the coaching and all that good stuff. So we need to pop over to roster management. We've got 70 on the roster. We can only carry 53. So i got to find 17 guys to get rid of. 10 of those can be moved to a practice squad. So we're only going to carry two quarterbacks on the active roster. And uh, I know Ryan Finley. I do not know Jake Dolgala. Even following the Bengals, I do not know who that is. So, But we do need three quarterbacks signed. So we'll let Jake move over to the practice squad. That gives us our two quarterbacks, uh, and we can hold on to that. Let's see if I view position counts. Ooh, okay, minimum three. I wonder if that's on active roster. I bet it is. I might have to move him back. Do I know how to do that? Oh, all right, so there is a, an option here to move to active squad. My assumption is I probably need to get this down to 52 players to move him back over. So uh, let's let's go position by position, see what we have to have. So we have five running backs. We need at least three, and I totally agree with having at least three. Uh, we're going to let Anderson, Bernard, and Mixon be our three. So uh, we're going to cut Perrine. And we'll move Williams to the practice squad. Now, again, if we can bring him back, uh, running backs get hurt. So the more the merrier as far as I'm concerned. One fullback, we're all good there. Tight end-wise, it looks like Franks and C.J. Ozama are pretty highly rated. I know Drew Sample in real life is also playing. Uh, I think that we're going to let go of Clark Harris. We're going to let go of Moritz Boringer. Let's click over. Oh, can I get that face out of here? There we go. All right, so we still need to we need to move quite a few. Uh, I'll, I'll, again, I'll keep an eye on this and see who we want to move to practice squad. As far as receivers go, you know, I think we are going to cut former first-round pick John Ross. He hasn't worked out in real life. Uh, he's not going to work out here. He can just move on with himself. So that leaves us, if we look at the position count, we got nine wide outs still. We need a, at least five. Uh, we can't have more than eight. Boyd, Erickson, Green. I like T. Higgins. Schlage, Mike Thomas. Damian Willis has got a pretty good rating here. Let's release Thomas. And let's move Higgins to the practice squad. Uh, I do like Alex Erickson, at least in real life. And, you know, we'll see how this carries over from you know, real life to in-game. Um, Erickson's a pretty good returner. Uh, I'll go and see what our special teams are set up like in just a minute. Two, three, four, five, six. That gives us seven wideouts still on the main roster. Let's also move Lodge over to the practice squad for now. So, back to position counts. At guard, we've got six on the roster. We need at least three, a maximum of five. All right, Mike Jordan, you might be the GOAT in the NBA, but you are not going to be around this Bengals squad. I don't know why this picture issue keeps popping up. I do not want to see the pictures when I'm doing this. So, that gives us five guards. I would like to have three on the active roster, preferably. Let's get rid of Johnson. Why does that keep popping up? I'll figure out what I'm doing. I'm sure it's a thing about where I've got my cursor or something. I'll figure out what I'm doing and stop that, hopefully. So we'll move. A dingy's, we can start, start Price and Suafilo. Let Redman be the backup. And... We'll let Adenji hang tight on that practice squad. Center, we've only got one on the roster. Is that going to cut it? We've got to have at least two. Uh, so we'll see. I might have to pick up somebody for like a... Uh... Hey, thanks, Chris. Appreciate it, buddy. 
Um, it looks like I might have to pick up a center. I know I'm relatively low on cap status, but you should always be able to hire uh, someone for the league minimum, so I'll, it looks like I'll have to pick up a center. And I'll have to add him to the to the live roster, I'd assume. So, let's... God, man, I mean, when I talk about how terrible these lines are, they're just flat-out awful. I don't have any use for a guy like that. See, I need to have my cursor over here somewhere when I do that so that it doesn't keep picking it up. All right, but that leaves us with seven offensive linemen on the active roster. I'll go out and hire, uh, sign another center. That'll give us eight. I'm good with eight. Taking a look at the defensive line. Defensive tackles. We got six. We need four. No more than five. So if we can cut one and move on to practice squad, we'd be doing just fine. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. We only have five, so we could just move one to the practice squad and call it a day. Wow, Sam Hubbard's got the lowest rating. I really like Sam Hubbard, though. Let's move him over to the practice squad. Defensive tackles. Can one and... Yeah, I'm sure one of the guards could play center. Uh, and I could probably... Let's see if we click on a dingy... I'm sure, you know, I haven't played enough to know exactly how to do it. I'm sure that there's a, a an option to do a position change. So one of them easily could fill in at that center position. I just am not sure how it's going to count for these for these position counts. I don't know if it'll let me play with a roster that doesn't match it. I'll, I'll try to play the first game without adding another center probably because, you know, in all likelihood, if somebody got hurt here, uh, I would stick, you know, these three guards, Price, Redman, and Suofilo. Uh, I don't know that any of them are, you know, amazing, but they're probably better than what I can get on the free agent market right now. So this is, I mean, this is obviously a long-term project, trying to rebuild this offensive line and the defensive line. They're both just plain awful. Taking a look at defensive tackle, we've got six. We only need four. Uh, freedom. Akinmoladen, freedom has been granted his freedom from the Cincinnati Bengals. He's out of here. Uh, keeping Geno, although he's close to the end of his contract, we're probably going to let that expire. He's getting up there in age, and he's making a ton, so we'll let him go eventually. Let's get, mm, let's get Tupo over to that practice squad. Gets us down to four tackles. Four ends, linebackers, let's see, safety corner. Just trying to get a feel for, for what I've got and what I still need. Uh, and I'm obviously, actually, what I'll probably honestly need to do is bring some of these guys back over some of these defensive linemen because I think this squad actually runs a 5-2. So I do think at the very least I'll need to bring Tupo back over. But that does mean, let's see if let's see if it reflects itself here in the position counts. Now, I still need at least six linebackers active but we're not going to carry more than six for certain. So let's just release. And Calitro, you're a practice squad, my man. Strong safeties. We've got three of them. We need at least two. Uh, in the in the depth chart, I've actually had a sneak peek. Oh, what's up, Breeze? Checking out the pro football game tonight, man. <laughs> After I'm sure you've seen a lot of the pro basketball lately. Feel free to, to talk that up in chat. I'm sure people will be excited about that as well. It's also uh, from Draft Day Sports, and it's supposed to be, I think the first access is supposed to be coming soon. I think they posted that on their Twitter or something like that. Maybe tomorrow, uh, but soon. So uh, be looking forward to that. I will probably stick with streaming college basketball, pro football, uh, and a handful of other things, but I know GM Games will uh, definitely support and, and put out content for their Pro Basketball 21, so keep your eyes peeled for that. All right, so what I was saying is I've already had a sneak peek at the depth chart. I know that the computer is wanting to play Sean Williams at one of these linebacker positions because not only is our offensive line awful and our defensive line is awful, but our linebackers are pretty bad, so they're going to want to 
They're wanting to run Sean Williams at a linebacker. So Von Bell's playing strong safety. I'll run with those three strong safeties. That's all good. Free safety, I've only got two. So any more cuts that I want to make or movement that I want to make needs to happen with the corners. I've only got one kicker. I've only got one punter. I'm fine with both of them. We want to bring Tupo and Dolgala both back over. And then we'll see on center. So I think if we cut a cornerback, Brown, you're awful. So now we can activate those two guys. So we're at 53. We'll see if it lets us play at this number. What year is the season? Uh, Breeze, I started it over. I uh, explained at the beginning. They made a number of changes to the game. I've learned it a little bit. Uh, we've got some more mods and things and, and some of these things, honestly, uh, to get everything working with all of the changes, it, it just had to be restarted. So I could have gone forward with, uh, you know, limping along with what we had or restart it and really go strong now that we're out of that early release. So this is 2020. We are basically in, you know, we're basically like three months ago, you know, this, this past off season before this real live NFL season started, that's where we're at. We're in a free agency period. Uh, we've got a little bit of cash. We're not going to make any big moves. The only thing that we might have to do is sign a center to get us uh, in line with uh, everything else should match. We're, we got a couple extra tight ends, one extra wide out. We're short of center. And everything else, I mean, we've either got extra or um, we should be good as far as, at least as far as number goes. If we have to add that other center, though, uh, I'll probably end up just m picking whichever of these cornerbacks I like the least and send them over to the practice squad. Uh, but we can we can check out the free agency and see what that looks like. Uh, it's been a while. Let's see. Now, I do remember from the last time. Okay, so here is the free agent report. So let's narrow this down and just take a look at centers. I should have just hit clear position, shouldn't I? All right, so Sean Joyner is the best center available. He's asking for a decent amount there. If we just offer, all right, it's going to bring us here. No, you're not a starter, but you're a, you are a backup. And we can offer you like three twenty-five a year for one year. Submit that offer. All right. So that's all that we're going to do. Let's complete this current day. Move forward. I doubt he signed that. Let's just focus on us. Ooh, we got mail. This might be his response. He declined it. Oh, the New York Giants signed him for four years at $1.4 million. Yikes. Yeah, we're not we're not dropping 1.4 million on a guy just to fill out our roster. Let me go forward out of this free agency period. See if I can actually. No, I didn't sign any big free agents. My my salary cap is right up against it, man. So I can't sign anybody. I only have 300 thousand or so. Uh, that's the first offer that I've attempted to make, and I'm just going to complete all of this. Uh, kind of like I skip transfers in college basketball. In the NFL, uh, I usually skip the first off-season period because, I mean, the, the the salary cap's already there. There's not going to be any great players out there available. Uh, not that I won't go and sign a big free agent when where possible, but uh, with with the sa available salary that I have and the players that are out there, it's just not worth it to pull through. If I've got to find a player to make the roster work, I'll do it, but I'm not making – I'm not saving a franchise in an off-season by signing a 61-rated center it's just that's not happening so uh, we are on to the training camps period now one thing that i do need and let's see upcoming free agents this is a thing uh, if you guys saw my last pro football stream uh one of the mods was actually in it and told us about this upcoming free agent tab so this is the list of everybody who's not under contract for next year. So you can see here they all have they all have ratings for 2020. They all have salaries for 2020, and none of them have salaries in 2021. So we can come right here 
and see uh no you know most of the big free agents are already signed by the time you know these rosters were assigned so like it, it, it it'll have all your big moves like you know uh Tom Brady to Tampa Bay and that sort of thing we can check that out let's check and make sure that's the case before I sit here and tell you a bunch of stuff that's not true but let's go to Tampa Bay and see so that's my assumption is that all of those big moves are the real moves that already happened and there you go Tom Brady uh, here with Tampa Bay so those kind of moves like whatever happened in real life whatever the big free agent signings were in real life uh, those are the ones that got that got brought over into the game I assume they went with like opening day rosters or something like that uh, I don't know exactly but those moves have already taken place there's nobody left that's that's big signings that type of thing so we are I was taking a look at upcoming free agents I think it was actually in the contract screen yeah Brady's the goat <laughs> that is very accurate it's just no getting around it I was always a Peyton Manning guy when they faced off but you know Peyton was basically done years ago uh, and Brady's still going as strong as ever it seems like so you can see here everybody that's about that's set to expire and we're paying huge money to some guys that are probably past their prime to be honest uh, we're paying Dunlap too much uh, AJ Green you know maybe he's still worth that I don't know uh, some of these guys, yikes! I'm gonna pay this cornerback two million a year. Some of this is rough. Uh, looking through, I definitely would like to re-sign Sean Williams if I can. So I think let's we'll see before we get going here. We got about forty million in salary coming off the books. If we look at everyone. Take a look here at 2021. We got a hundred million dollar. Hold on. Oh, I'm actually at the five million in cap status. I guess that's with the cuts that I made. But anyway, the salary cap's right around a hundred million. Next year, we've only got about 60 spoken for. Uh, figure probably another 10, maybe less on draft picks. So we next year we'll have about 30 million to play around with. So we can use that up in extensions and if we still have money left for agent signings next year. So knowing that we've got about 30 million, uh, looking through the ratings again, uh, even things like kicker I can figure out, fullback I can probably figure out. Uh, Joe Mixon right here is probably the first one that I really need to get re-signed. So, all right, so the suggested contract is a base salary of 2.7 over five years. And I'd be more than happy if, if I could re-sign Mixon for that number. Uh, yeah, sign me up for that. Now, this, it, as the developers explained last time, is just a starting point. Uh, it's very likely, you know what? It's just a starting point is to give you a rough idea of, of the ballpark you should be in. Uh, we'll throw him $3 million a year and see what he thinks about it. Let's see if we can. Do we want to? Uh, let's just leave it balanced for now. You know, there's there's a lot of different ways to look at that, but let's leave it balanced. We'll give him three million a year. Interest. I don't remember the bonuses before. Uh, I would. Uh, let's just submit the offer without adding the bonus. Yeah, I don't think, since I didn't hit the add bonus button, I don't think it actually calculated it. So we've extended an extension for Mixon. And like I said, he's he was very obviously uh, one of the guys that needs to be a high, high priority. Auden Tate is another one. So we'll go through and try to offer extensions to these guys. Oh, we're already on this. Uh, well, I'll try to offer extensions to these guys. that we know we want to re-sign and then we'll see kind of where we come down money wise and then we'll go on to that uh, i guess second tier of guys that are going to need to end up being re-signed 
So we got. Where was Auden Tate? There's Mixon. <clears throat> Jordan Franks, nice and young, highly rated. He's definitely at the top of my list of people that need a new contract. He's looking for around 1 8. Yeah, we can go 1 8 5. How about that? Let's get that submitted. Closed out. And who else do we need? Damon Willis has got a he's got a decent rating on here. He's young enough. He's wanting some money. Let's stick with one six. And we can Trayvon Henderson. Oh, seven hundred eighty thousand. That's it. Let's let's go a million. So we'll get an idea where some of these guys come down. Excuse me. Uh, we'll see if if that's enough to sign any of them. If the if the offers are low and you know, piss them off, or exactly how it works out. Uh, I have no real idea. Just scrolling back up here, we we could offer we could offer Carter. Bullock's getting up there in age. Sean, did I already offer Sean Williams? I think I already offered Williams. No, I didn't. I skipped it and went down and offered Mixon, didn't I? Williams is 29 years old, so he's getting up there. We'll start him off at two for three years. And that's... It defaulted to a front-loaded. We can leave it like that. See if he likes it. Uh, and actually, Geo is still young enough. He's wanting a lot of money, though. I'd rather get Mixon and then see if we can fill in that second and third running back with some younger guys uh, cheaper out of the draft. And then let's just see what it's thinking about A.J. Green. Ugh. He's 32 years old, talking about five years for almost $7 million a year. This is going to be A.J. Green's last season in Cincinnati in my sim. Promise you that. Random Task asked if I can integrate with the college, uh, college football game when it comes out. I honestly don't know. I haven't tried it. I haven't talked about it. I know for a fact that's a feature in their basketball games. I would imagine that um, if it's not already in, I would imagine that it's probably planned for the future. I don't want to speak for anyone, but it would make sense if they've done it before that they would do it again. Let's see in league options if there's an option to do it already. Link League. I would say that's your answer. I haven't done it myself. I haven't tried it, but that suggests... Oh, I'm sorry. It says Linked League Options, and then it says Future Use. So I don't know if that means they, don't, they haven't actually implemented it yet or it's just not live yet because the college football game hasn't come out. That I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if if they still stream uh, this. I don't know for a while they were streaming weekly, uh, but I know, you know, jump on the, the Wolverine Studios forums or hit them on Twitter or something. Uh, they've got some of the best customer service I've ever experienced. They're very responsive. So, uh, you know, shoot that message out to them. I can't answer it for you. I apologize for that. I've got most of the contracts out that I want to get out. So now let's take a look here at what happens in the training camps. It's training camp results for all teams. Woo. Look at some of those losses. I don't think those are overall ability losses. I think those are like, you know, maybe maybe Cooper here lost five points in one thing, four points in another, and it all added up to 31, I think is what that means. All right, so AJ Green lost a point, and we got a lot of guys that got better. None of them are huge gains, but a lot of guys, you know, I'd rather have a lot of guys gaining than a lot of guys losing. We only had one guy losing. We got a lot of gains over here, so that's good to see. Let's check out our inbox. This should be responses to our contract offers. All right, so Sean Williams not ready to decide yet. Carter signed it. Henderson. 
Henderson wants more. Okay. Willis wants more. Not ready. Mixon signed. Wow. I'm pretty sure I got him for a bargain. Let's go take a look at that first. I don't care about the other guys. I'm excited about Joe Mixon. Where is he at? Joe Mixon. So, yeah, we signed him to a four-year deal with only $3 million a year. That's the same kind of money Gio was wanting, and Gio's much older and not as good. So uh, that's a real bargain there on Mixon, in my opinion. Uh, I'm happy with that. I don't ever want to overpay a running back because I do think more than any other position they're to some degree exchangeable. But uh, Mixon's a good one, and, and I'll take that. No, I'm not – I'm not going to cut AJ. I did. Now, when I sim the last time, when I like let the computer do it, it cut AJ. I'm not that heartless. I mean, the, the guy's been around the Bengals forever. I'd love to re-sign him for cheaper. Like If I could do like uh, maybe like two years at four or five million, I'd be happy to do that just because, you know, the, the guy's done a lot for the franchise. I've watched him for years. Uh, and I, I can be a little sentimental on here, but... Uh, I'm not paying. I'm not giving five years, seven million a year. That's absurd. So probably what will end up happening is we'll just let him go into free agency. Uh, so I do need to bounce back over to email, find the guys that wanted better offers, and make sure we make them happy. So Williams is still deciding. Carter has signed. Henderson, Willis, and Tate all need another round of offers. <clears throat> Can we just sort this by overall? Oh, wow, Zama was on the list. Uh, let's see, Tate. So now, so now you can see here that the computer has gone up. I wish there was something on this screen that would tell me what I offered him last time. I believe it was 1.8, but I am going to double check that. I can, I can at least see it in the email. So uh, the information's there. Yeah, I offered him three years at 1.8. So he wants a little bit more money. Now it's, it's advising we go up to 2.1. I'm not going to go up quite that high. Uh, we should just be able to... Auden Tate, contract... And so, see, this bounces around a little bit. This is going to change every time you come in here, this base salary, this suggestion, because, again, it's just a starting point. It's just a place to, to get you to leap off from. So we know he wants more than the 1.8 we offered. We'll try two. Uh, and, yeah, four years is fine. He, he looks like a promising young player. I'll, I'll give him four years at two. So we got Tate an offer. Let's get our other three guys new offers because these are guys that we definitely want to frank's no decision these are guys we definitely want to sign we offered willis 1.6 for three years so let's go find him one point six for three years so let's offer him i don't know uh one eight for three years And I know we got at least one other. Uh, I think it's Frank's, right? So we can get that offer out and then move ahead another week. Nope, it's not Frank's. He's still looking. Willis was it's Willis Trayvon Henderson. We offered him a million. Uh, we need to go a little bit above that. Trayvon Henderson. Let's go with one and a quarter. And that's going to be for four years. All right. <clears throat> Ready to move forward again. Let's save this. Guys, I don't have any idea how long we're going to go tonight. I don't really have a plan for this. Uh, we're just rolling with it. I'm going to get some of this off-season, a preseason kind of stuff taken care of. Oh, we're actually in the preseason here. So we can send some games now. So a couple of ways to do this, and it's been a couple weeks for me, so I'm just going to hit sim preseason week one. And now we want to... Go back. Can we view weekly recap? What's that do? Oh! That's going to give us a little bit of run. Let's skip that. 
It looks like you got something interesting going there, uh, but that's not what I was looking for. Uh, I just want to show the score of my game. So we won 30 to 24 against the Cardinals. Of course, these preseason games, you know, the scores are kind of meaningless, but actually I might just sim all the way to the regular season. <laughs> All right, so we can go back and check that out. So we beat the Jags. We beat the Jets. We lost to Washington. All right, let's go back and check out the inbox. We got to get... Uh oh we got a lot of injury report information here. Now, what I don't see... Oh... What I don't see is any responses to the second round of contracts that we put out. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Let's see. Player performance against the Jags. And this is just to kind of see. They'll give you a value per snap here. Uh, and a little bit of information. Key plays. How many snaps they were on the field. Burrow only played 36 snaps. Had a pretty good value per snap. Uh, Burrow seemed, at least when I did this last time, Burrow was always one of the key players. Gino was a key player. All right. Injury report. Fractured skull. Oh, CJ Uzama. Once again against the Jets, Joe Burrow on the list. Joe Burrow on the list. Why does I say one to two weeks now? Two to four weeks? I guess maybe these are just estimates. All right. Pro Basketball 21 doesn't have a preseason. Interesting. All right. Let's take a look here at our roster. Obviously, I mean, Uzama with a fractured skull. <clears throat> He's questionable. I thought I said like eight to 12 weeks or something. It's only been three or four. How quick can you come back from a fractured skull? That seems like a big one. <laughs> uh, the good news is we've we've got four tight ends on the roster. So what we can do here is we can just I think I can just move him to the practice squad, can't I? And kind of use that almost like a DL or something. Bring on Marcus Lodge over, so if we need another receiver, somebody that can catch something, somebody on the hands team, what have you, uh, we've got it there. So jump over to the depth chart, reset these real quick. We can let our uh, coaches, you know, take into account any kind of changes in ability, any injuries, any changes that we've made. Uh, they're actually they got Dolgala as the second stringer behind Burroughs, so. Well, maybe I will. Oh, we're keeping them all active anyway. Never mind. I was going to say, maybe I need to move Finley to the practice squad if the coach likes Dolgala as well. But we got to have all three of them active. So, all right. And take a look at special teams. Set that up. So, it's actually got Rodney Anderson, Demarcus Lodge returning kicks. Rodney Anderson returning punts. And no sign of Alex Erickson anywhere in here. <laughs> makes them twice as smart yeah but if, if you like how do you throw it like which head do you throw it to which one's got its eyes on the ball maybe he can have two eyes on the ball and two eyes upfield to run that would make him dangerous uh let's jump into our regular season here like i said i'm not going too deep in strategy and all that stuff we'll play this out let me save it real quick before we get going we'll play a couple games out and then we'll jump in and see what it looks like if we go play by play once all right, so we got that saved. So let's see how we do in week one. We got too many cornerbacks on the roster. We got to fix our roster. How many do we have? I thought we were good everywhere else. Oh, we got to move a cornerback. Just one of them. Roster management. And we got three more spots on the practice squad. So who don't we love? Darius Phillips or LaShawn Sims? Phillips is a little bit younger. Uh, LaShawn, you're headed to the practice squad, my man. 
so we should be good there that opens up another spot for us so we'll try to bring back a dingy and see if we can roll with that uh, if not we'll move him back to the practice squad and then we're gonna have to go sign a center but let's see if we can get by with this hopefully we can nope gotta go grab a center so off to sign a player which is right there let's clear positions grab the centers Chris Reed is available and we're just gonna sign him to the active roster that's gonna give him a minimum contract for one year so back to the roster uh, back to roster management and Chris Reed is already on the active roster and a dingy heads back to the practice squad now we should be good to go unless I missed another another one all right, so it's simmed out. Let's see how we did against the Baltimore Ravens and my boy Lamar Jackson. Uh, obviously, you know, with my heart, I would want the Ravens to win, but you know, this is my stream. I'm supposed to be a Bengal right now, so let's see what we did. Oh, we got smoked. Look at Lamar, 376, four touchdowns. Oh boy, my man, 88 overall. Man, that's nice. Uh, let's check out this box score though. See how our guys did. Well, we actually started off right. Burrow to Franks went up 7-0. And then that was the end of our touchdowns. <laughs> so Burrow 8 of 23. That's brutal. That's absolutely brutal. Again, this is you're taking a rookie quarterback and putting him behind this god awful offensive line. Uh, you know, we've got some decent weapons. Mixon's a decent weapon. Auden Tate, Tyler Boyd. Uh, you don't even see AJ Green in the mix here. Uh, which, again, just reinforces why we're not going to pay him big money anymore. Uh, but, you know, we, we got treated probably like we should have there. Against the Browns. Oh, we got to go back. Oh, we're going to play the Ravens again so soon. Uh, we took it on the chin against the Browns. Lost at home again. Baker Mayfield ate us alive. Not as many touchdown passes. Uh, let's check the box score on this one. And then we should be checking email every time to see who's playing well, because I at least want to keep my eye on those high performers. Again, Joe Burrow, 9 of 27, is god-awful. At least he went two touchdowns, no picks that time. He got sacked four times. Uh, Joe Mixon can't get anything going. Well, Stanley Morgan had a big play, my 77-yard touchdown. Uh, Jordan Franks, the tight end. We should really be targeting the tight end a lot. Auden Tate, nine targets, only one catch for five yards. So that's not good. Uh, let's take a look here at our email. See if we got any more responses on contracts and see who's been playing well. Sean Williams signed. Auden Tate signed. Willis hasn't reviewed it. Henderson hasn't reviewed it. Against the Browns. Burrow again played well. Stanley Morgan. Franks all played well. Ooh, Geno Adkins out with a broken foot. There's some team highlights in our training. Jordan Franks wants some more money. So we'll go back and offer him $2 million. Uzama fully recovered. Busy. Willis signed. That's good. So I think Franks is the only... <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Franks should be the only contract that we need to re-sign right now. Or re-offer right now. I think I can just scroll down to Jordan Franks, and we're going to offer him two. Let's go ahead and take a look at, once again, our upcoming free agent. Oh, we need to be in the contracts tab. I think. Maybe not. All right, so Franks we've offered... So now we're into Bernard, Uzama. Uh, yeah, I would... I'm not going to re-sign Bernard for that much money. I'll re-sign Uzama. <clears throat> yeah, that looks good. Uh, AJ Green, no. Bullock, no. Brandon Wilson, yes. Well, he wants 2.3. Yeah, I mean, that's, well, he doesn't want it. That's the suggestion. We'll try two, three, five. We'll give him three years. 
Just see what he thinks about that. Henderson we're already offering. Greg Mabin, nice young corner. Ooh, we need to offer Mabin and Lodge, really. Submit that. Lodge, where'd you go? Oh, uh, we'll four years is fine. He's he's nice and young. I'll give these young guys a while. All right, back to the games. Looks like we still had two emails. Did I miss two emails? An injury report there, and player performances against the Ravens. So once again, Burrow. I mean, he's on there every time. I don't know if this just puts anybody with a value per snap over one. That's my assumption, is it's totally based on value per snap, uh, but. Burrow's always on here, so you know the the ratings. I'm sure are a little bit uh, like anything else, like fog of war or whatever. Uh, you're not getting a perfect rating. Burrow's rated a 76 in this one. You know, I've, I've restarted three or four seasons with the Bengals as I've tested things, and you know he's ranged anywhere from you know 75 to 80, 81. Uh, so he's somewhere in that range. You never know exactly, but as long as he keeps showing up on this list, he's our quarterback for the foreseeable future. Jordan Franks crushing it all right let's delete can we delete all emails now yeah all right now we can just go week by week on our emails hopefully as long as i remember to go check them every week so once again we got to play the ravens this time we get them at home let's see if we can do a little bit better i don't expect much let's check out that score oh it is better uh, lamar again check out that box score so, uh, passing, Lamar with two touchdowns, 300 yards again. Not a great percentage. Burrow, miserable. He, he's not been over 50% in the game yet. But once again, good yardage, good touchdowns. He, he's getting hit. He's getting beat up. Uh, Mixon's getting a lot of carries. He's not doing anything with it. We can't do anything with this offensive line in the shape that it's in. Auden Tate with a 92-yard touchdown. Nice. Nice. AJ Green's still nowhere to be found. He's not getting into anything. All right. Let's see what our emails from week three look like. Burrow, once again, 3.41. So Burrow, even with uh, he's completing 40% of his passes a game, and he's still got huge value per snap. Uh, and you can see, I mean, he just made all his wide receivers better. So I think. I'm not sure why we're getting two of these medical staff a week. I don't know if one of them's like before the game and the other's after, but um, as long as our roster is uh, like eligible or whatever, as long as I have enough current minimum players or whatever, I'm, I'm going to let that roll. All right, Lodge did not care for 1.2 a year. Maben wants a little bit more money. Wilson also wants more money. Uzama will get back to me. And Jordan Frank signs, so that's cool. And so did Trayvon Henderson. So Wilson, Mabin, and Lodge. Let's let's make another run at those guys. Wilson, Mabin, and Lodge. Brandon Wilson. I think we offered him like two Two and a quarter. I know the this suggestion is way too low. That's not not what we're offering him. I don't know where that came from. Was it? I think we offered him two. I, I guess I should just check it every time. I don't want to screw it up and, and make one of these guys pissed off and not want to, you know, make it to where they're not willing to offer uh, negotiate anymore. We offered him two point three five. So we need to go two and a half on Wilson. So for three years. Oh. All right, Maben. I think we can just offer him like a million a year. All 
right. And last but not least, Demarcus Lodge. We offered him 1.2, so I don't know, bump it up to let's go 1.4. How about that? Uh, let's let's add another year on there though. You know, if we're if we're locking down young guys, let's let's lock them down for that extra year. All right, on to week four. We've gotten our two games against uh, Lamar Jackson behind us, and now of course we got to go to New England and face off with Cam Newton. So on the road, probably going to be another bloodbath for us. All right, well we we played decent. We had a big fourth quarter there. It'll be interesting to see what happened there. All right, so we – Stanley Morgan from Joe Burrow. Another – Joe Burrow, I think, is getting a 50-yard touchdown pass every game. Uh, oh, he only went two for six, so he might have got hurt, which is, I mean, another sub-50% completion rating. Maybe it would be best to just pull him out and let him sit out this year and uh, try to get him some help up there blocking. Uh, but Dogala came in was even worse somehow uh, but we did have the one big touchdown pass and then late in the game we got an interception we got a pick six here Tory mctire and then joe mixon caught a pass from jake let's check out first of all the big big thing to check out is gonna be okay burrow just with a bruised hip so he's probable that's all right lodge signed Wilson signed. Nobody else has had a chance. Following issue. Finley's upset about his playing time. Whatever, my man. Whatever. Burrow again on that list. Delete the emails. Forge on ahead. All right. So, here in week five, we get the Tennessee Titans. I think, were they in? They were a good team last year. I know that. I don't remember if they were in like the AFC Championship or the Super Bowl or what. Um, I can't remember these days. Like when I was 20, I could have told you every Super Bowl champ for the last you know, 30 years before I was born and who they played. And now anymore, I can't remember who was good last week. Uh, so I expect the Titans to be good. I expect Derrick Henry to run all over us. Uh, we don't have anybody on the defensive line to do much about that. Let's check out the score here. We were at home. Oh, my goodness. We put up 55 points. The offense came out of nowhere. Tannehill still led the game in passing, although he did have three interceptions, so that's going to loom large, I'm sure. Mixon with a 100-yard game, two touchdowns. Wow, guys. Uh, Dogala only Threw the ball twice. Burrow only threw it 15 times. We only threw 17 passes in that game. Burrow still went for 261 with three touchdowns. He still got roughed up, sacked four times, which is way too much. Uh, but Mixon with the big game on the ground, two touchdowns, a 33-yard long run. Uh, Rodney Anderson also got one in. Burrow also added 20 yards on the ground. And then three huge catches out of Jordan Franks. A.J. Green, I don't know that A.J. Green has a catch all year. So, so we take a look here. Franks with the big catch. Uh, Mixon with a five-yard run. A couple of field goals. Morgan from Burrow. Mixon with the big run. Short one to Morgan. Rodney Anderson. And then in the late game, pick six. So, just an offensive eruption there. I don't know if that's just a little bit of getting back to the, the average where we've been so awful or what. But, uh, all right, so Maben signed the contract. Uzama wants a little bit more money. So we offered him two and three quarters. We'll have to go. I wonder if we can go, like, I don't want to quite go three million on Uzama. Maybe two nine. Maybe he would take that. Let's take a look here. Mixon, Burrow. Bailey had a good game. That's good to see. You know, not a whole lot of defensive players have been showing up over here. And then Trayvon Henderson as well. So a couple guys complaining about playing time. I'm not worried about that. They're not, they're not important, you know, big time players. Let's go get this contract offer out to CJ. We're gonna go. We're gonna go two nine. Maybe two nine five. I don't know. What's he? 
Tony is one of our better players, at least compared to what we've got. I mean, we got to pay somebody, right? Uh, let's let's do that for three years, though. All right, see if we can lock him up and bounce back over here and see what the next week's going to bring. So, you know, I, I thought we would absolutely get run out of the building and didn't work out that way. Now we got a rivalry week headed in to play the Steelers. Boo. Uh, let's send this week. Go back, check out our score, and we got smoked. So there's the beating I was expecting to have last week. We got it this week against the Steelers. Just absolutely took us to school. Burrow still can't crack 50% completions. Uh, still no picks, but this week no touchdowns. Sacked five times again. That's just awful. The running game had absolutely nothing going. A.J. Green still without a catch. I don't even know if the guy's playing. I guess I could go check the roster, uh, check the depth chart. But if he wasn't playing, if he's not playing, it wouldn't really be surprising. Auden Tate, Stanley Morgan, and Tyler Boyd are just better at this point. I mean, he's he's rated at a 75, uh, so I'm sure he's in on some packages. But he's probably not getting a whole lot of snaps. So his his time in Cincinnati is definitely nearing an end. We'll see. Geno showed up. Burrow always on the list of players that that stood out. Uh, he's still banged up. Uzama not ready to make a decision. All right. Let's see what we've got for the next week. So the Chicago Bears are coming into town. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Chicago's going to Cleveland. Uh, I was just used to us being here, and it was orange, and it threw me off. This is a bye week. So let's check out our injury report after the bye. Burrow's still probable. Uzama still hasn't looked at it. Okay. Let's delete these emails. And now go play our week eight. So now we got the Steelers coming into Paul Brown. Right, we got them. That's nice. If you're only going to win a handful of games every year, might as well make it against the Steelers. And look at that. A, a tight game right down to the end. We beat them in the fourth quarter. Look at the box score. Burrow, still not over 50%. He did have two touchdowns this week, but only 143 yards, two picks. Pretty bad rating. Uh, that's pretty ugly. Hey, the new build's looking great. We were favored versus Pittsburgh at home, really. I think that probably speaks more about them than us. Uh, once again here, Torrey McTire, that's his second pick, six of the year. Uh, Franks from Burrow, Auden Tate from Burrow, Bullock with a field goal. So, you know, Burrow probably had his worst game of the year so far, and then it's right back to the story every week. Mixon can't do anything on the ground. Uh, Burrow got a little bit on the ground. A A.J. Green, nowhere to be seen. Yeah, Burrow's been getting uh, – this is actually one of his better rushing days, but he, he's, he's continuously, even though he's eating these sacks, he keeps having positive rushing yards every week. Oh, yeah, the long at 38, so three for nothing. Uh, but, yeah, he, he's looking all right. Uh, so, we got the nice win there against Pittsburgh. Let's check out the emails. Let's see what we're looking at here. Carl Lawson played good. Burrow, as always. I feel like this is the same story every week. Burrow's always on here. He brings he usually brings Franks or some of his other receivers. It's nice to see some defensive guys standing out. Uzama signed that offer, so we didn't have to get up to $3 million on him. We just barely stay below it. Tyler Boyd. Sean Williams, Randy Bullock all improving. Although I don't really know what a kicker's endurance is going to do, but uh, I'd rather have him improving than getting worse. So we'll take what we can get here. Go ahead, Sim Week 9. We're headed up to Minnesota. I do wish, since it doesn't show those scores, I wish when you hit sim it would stay on that week instead of progressing. But maybe that's just personal preference, and there might be a setting somewhere I can change. Let's we'll see how this game went. All right, so the offense couldn't get anything done. We lost 17-7. to And I'm going to go out on a limb and say Burrow's below 50% passing. Mixon couldn't get anything going. A.J. Green still didn't have a catch. Let's see. 30% for Burrow. Mixon did get 60 yards. 
and AJ Green's nowhere. Um, we've got to fix this line, folks. There's nothing that's going to happen consistently for this team until we fix this offensive line. I mean, they've got position players, and I just re-signed a bunch of them. Like, Burrow's a first-year guy. I just re-signed Mixon. I re-signed Franks and Uzama. I re-signed a couple of the young wideouts. That offense is going to be fine if it can get... I mean, it's got nice, young, cheap skill players that can get us there. Again, Burrow, one of his receivers, and a defensive player popped up. Over-unders. Uh, I would do over-unders on this one. In college basketball, I usually get a good feel for it, and I have no idea. But if you guys want to bet the over-unders that the game is giving you, because the game's giving us lines. Jonah Williams is doubtful. That's scary, being as he's our best offensive lineman. Suofilo fractured his cheekbone. Andrew Brown is out. All right. A.J. Green actually got a little bit better there. Got a little stronger. Not often you see 32-year-olds getting better. Oh, now these guys, what do they look? Oh, oh. These, these are morale issues, so these guys are pissed off about losing. And then Finley's upset about playing time. I don't know what he expects. Uh, he can go on somewhere. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll sim another week here, and then uh, I might go check out. Well, actually, here we go. We got Kansas City coming in. Somehow, guys, the line on this game is Cincinnati by three. I have no idea who's setting these lines. I mean, Kansas City is Patrick Mahomes. Oh, there's a there's a player without a pick, Chris, if you're watching. Jordan Tamu. He's actually, okay, so maybe Mahomes is hurt. Let's check out their roster. What is going on over here? Patrick Mahomes rated at 100. Maybe he was hurt and now he's not. So, so yeah, that's what happened. He played some preseason games. Uh, he played the first couple of games. Then he got hurt. So that backup played all of these weeks. And then he came back in week nine against the Seahawks. All right, that makes a whole lot more sense. I was starting to worry. It's like sometimes, especially, uh, you know, there's a thousand different things going on on these sports sims. It's hard to get it exactly right. So sometimes there's some hiccups, especially right out of the gate. Uh, I was really worried that was some kind of issue, but it's just an injury. Uh, so if Mahomes is back, Kansas City's blowing us off the map. I'll take Kansas City all day. Yeah, I'm taking Kansas City, Chris. <laughs> uh, like maybe the maybe the lines are based on their performance to date in this season with Mahomes out. Yeah, look, Kansas City, they're two and six. They've lost six in a row. So I would imagine Mahomes is back. Uh, Mahomey Mahomes, he'll be picking them back up. Kansas City, uh, I'll take them to cover easily. Let's go and check out our contract. See if there's some more. Uh, some more offers that we would like to make. All right, so this is all players, and now now see we've we've already added about twenty one thousand dollars in salary to next year. So we've really really only got about eight or nine million left to play around with. Whether we want to do that with extensions here, or whether I want to do it in the upcoming free agency period is the big question. So if we've got eight or nine million. I mean, what in here is worth keeping? I mean, if Bernard would come cheaper than $3 million a year, sure. If AJ would come for cheaper than 6 or 7 or 8 whatever he's wanting. But then you're talking about you know, Mason Shrek. Maybe if I can get him on something cheap. This Chris Reed, he, he's decent. And then we're down below sub 70s we can see what shrek and and reed are no one point no absolutely not that's for 71 you know these are just suggestions so let's offer this guy 1.1 1 .1 for three years 
You know, if we can grab a nice backup on the cheap, sure. Uh, and Chris Reed. Now, he's awfully pissed off about playing time. But, yeah, I would totally... I mean, that's a... He could almost start for us, honestly. He's only 28. That's not bad for a, for a lineman. Uh, yeah. Let's balance that out. I don't know, the balance on the front loader and all that, I'm just kind of just kind of playing it uh, whatever I feel like in the moment. For right now, I don't really have a plan on that. Making a new thumbnail for this rebuild. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is a super big rebuild. Uh, all right, let's see, guys. Uh, I think everybody in chat's taking Kansas City here. I'm certainly taking Kansas City here. And Kansas City rolls by 24. Mahomes for 270 and two touchdowns. Check that box score. Burrow can't break 50%. A decent rate. He's just getting beat up. Four and five sacks every game. Uh, this is the same story. It's been the same story all year. It's not going to change. Uh, it's not going to change until we draft some linemen in here. So that just is what it is. Carl Lawson had a good game. Burrow's always here. He always, Frank's more often than not. I mean, I keep saying Burrow's dragging his receivers with him, but Frank shows up a lot. So at some point, uh, it... It starts to become about Jordan Franks just being a player. Right, Reed hasn't looked yet. Shrek hasn't looked yet. Owner is worried we're not living up to expectations. Not a shock. The interesting thing to see here is how long I can go before I get fired. Because <laughs> I'm on some kind of challenge mode, I think. Um, I think I'm on some kind of challenge mode. I can't remember if I clicked the option to to get fired or not uh it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense I, hopefully i turned off that option because i don't want that to happen uh, i just don't think it'll be that interesting this is a rebuild uh, but let's check out this score see how we did on the road against chicago chicago was favored by nine i would think that it would be a little bit closer but it wasn't it was actually chicago pretty easily covered that 16 points burrow had him some touchdowns still can't crack 50 percent passing though Mixon had a good game. Mixon had some good catches. So Mixon, I mean, we we extended Joe Mixon three million a year for four years. Right now, that's I mean, just an absolute steal. And everything else, I mean, it's not worth looking. Our our defense is awful. Burrow and Frank's playing well, and Mixon again. Uh, Davis Gaither played well, and he's played well. He's popped up on this list a couple of times. Uh, Jonah Williams has recovered from his injury. Brown from his injury. Jesse Bates, Marcus Bailey, Brandon Wilson improving. Chris Reed actually signed that contract. So he was upset about the lack of playing time. But he has signed. Shrek did not react well to the contract. Nothing made him use his indoor voice. So he was pissed off at being offered 1.1. And that's all, about all. You know, I've already got two tight ends. Uh, I can bring in somebody else. Morale's declining. That's not a shock. We're losing a lot of games here. Uh, only so much you can do in in the first season. In the NFL, sometimes it takes you know two or three seasons. It's not like college where you, know, you bring in the right couple of freshmen and, and you're good to go. Uh, <laughs> rebuilding is a project. So uh, the Chargers favored at seven at their place. Uh, that line seems about right to me. So let's see how it played out. Ooh, we picked up a road win. We're up to three and eight. Let's see the box score. Burrow, <laughs> he's close to 50%. He's just not getting there this year. Mixing with a decent game. Franks, once again, doing things and stuff. Jordan Franks, man, what did I re-sign him for? Current extension, I offered it three years, two million a year. So, looking good there. Let me make sure that that's... Not sure why his picture hung out there. I want to make sure that that is accurate. I want to make sure he actually signed that extension. Yeah. Because it was saying, if you look, um, it was saying one year, but that's his current contract. So his new one will pick up next year. And it's for three years, $2 million a year. All right, back to... Oh. We got a couple emails here we need to check out. 
So player performances, Burrow, Auden Tate, Brandon Wilson, Franks again, Mixon. So you can see it's the same guys over and over. I feel bad for Mixon. I mean, it's rookie year, and he's only going to complete like 40% of his passes. That's like, you know, running quarterbacks like Lamar Jackson or somebody, if Lamar completes 60% of his passes, he gets trashed because he doesn't, you know, he's not completing passes. He's not a real quarterback. Burrow's going to end up like 45. Uh, it's going to be a bad year for him. But I can't blame him, and I don't blame him one single bit. See here. Oh, we are favored by two and a half against the Lions. Took him down 20 to three. And look, oh, oh, Burrow dangerously close to 50%. Did he? No, he was one pass too many. He's going to be just below it. He's still got that bruised hip that he's working on. Uh, let's check this box score then. So if Burrow didn't have a huge game, Mixon didn't have a huge game, where is um, our scoring summary? Mixon. Oh, we only scored 20. So really, that was a defensive game. I'll be interested to see what defensive players played well. Burrow, Mixon, so Logan Wilson. Logan Wilson, the only defensive player showing up on this list. Uh, four big plays, though. And, of course, Jordan Franks, Joe Burrow, they're, they're regulars on the list. You can just assume they're there every week. Uh, Mixon getting better. Carter, Redman. So we're getting some improvement. A uh, handful of players still pretty upset that we're losing games. I don't know what they want us to do exactly. They're the ones playing. <laughs> if they're the ones playing and they keep losing, like why are they mad? Shouldn't I be the one that's upset? All right, Denver came to town, and we tied with the Broncos, moving us to 4-8-1. and one. Franks again, Franks again. Jordan Franks having a year. Mixon with 160 yards. Couldn't get him in the end zone. That's a shame. Burrow with some more running here. Jordan Franks almost 150 yards. <clears throat> 84 yarder Whew. Jordan Franks is crushing it guys he's having himself a year this is ridiculous uh, it's like a pro bowl tight end kind of season Mixon, Burrow, Franks, Adkins and Pratt with some standout performances handful of guys still upset that we're losing that's nothing I can do about it right now so now we're headed out to play Vegas Vegas is a 5 point favorite line seems about right to me Let's see what actually goes down. And, ooh, took them down, 42-14. The only problem with this, like, we're looking pretty good here. I mean, relatively speaking, 5-8-1. I mean, I'll take that uh, out of this Bengals team with the completely destroyed lines and, you know, young rookie quarterback. The only problem with this is it's hurting our draft pick. Like, we're obviously not going to the playoffs or winning playoff games. So, I'd rather just be bad, but... Uh, we keep winning games, so let's see how that worked out. Burrow finally got above 50%. Look at that. He goes for 62%, and we win by 30. Still got sacked four times, threw four touchdown passes. Mixon was all right. So look at Auden Tate. Whew. Three catches, every one of them a touchdown. That's a heck of a ball game. Franks was all right. Mixon caught a touchdown. Interesting game on the road. So, regular suspects there. Atkins, Carl Lawson, Drew Sample got into the mix. So Gino and Carl or Gino and Jordan Evans actually. They just excuse me, keep showing up. Burrow's finally healthy, so he dealt all season with that bruised hip. All right, week 16. We're really moving here. <laughs> Virtually sweating. Mm -mm. Headed up to Cleveland, they're seven-point favorites. Six, eight, and one. At some point, these players got to stop being mad about losing. You know, they're not really losing. See what we got here? Stanley Morgan, twice. Auden Tate, Jordan Franks. 
So Burrow, once again, almost to 60%. 250 yards, four touchdowns, no picks, only sacked twice. So the offensive line showed up, showed up and helped Mixon. Actually got some running yardage. Uh, he was one of our leading receivers. So Mixon just all around. Auden Tate, 12 targets, only four catches. What is going on there? Oh, my goodness. It's been an interesting season. They started off about like I expected. Now they've picked up a, a handful of wins that I really didn't expect. Adkins, once again, you know he's showing up on here every week. Oh, look at the training this week. Lots of improvement there. And that's the nice thing about having a young team is, is hopefully they're going to improve a lot. So, you know, as long as we're re-signing these young players that we've got, uh, we've still got a little bit of flexibility with, with our cap, with what we're doing there. So, I mean, I could go up, go back and re-sign, like, that Martin stick for you know, $2 million a year or whatever he's looking for. Re-sign Giovanni for 3 a year. Or, you know, I could assume I'm just dropping $8, 9 $10 million into rookies and then... Uh, spend the other $10 million on a difference maker somewhere. So uh, I'll probably save the rest of that money. Uh, and obviously we're going to have to sign some minimum contract type guys just to fill out the roster. Uh, so realistically, we may only have 5 or $6 million. But if we got 5 or $6 million to drop on one player, I mean, that's a you know that's the kind of money A.J. Green's asking for. So if I can find somebody a little bit younger and you know still worth that money, uh, those kind of guys are difference makers, especially if I could grab, you know, some kind of lineman to give us some support or like a linebacker. I would certainly consider that. Let's see how we go here. Week 17, Packers coming into town. We're actually favored by one and a half, and this, I assume, will do it for the Bengals this year, and we win 17 to 12. So we went 7, 8, and 1. Very interesting year. That's going to be very much a middling draft pick for us. I would have really loved to have had a top draft pick, but that's not going to happen. Uh, I guess I can't be too upset about winning, though. And again, Burrow comes out on the right side of 50%. Good to see. Um, Auden Tate, nice game. I don't think A.J. Green caught a pass this year. I mean, I don't know how many plays he played. Playoff scouting? What is this? Oh, hold on. I didn't even look at the standings because we started off like 2-9. and nine. Did we make the playoffs? Oh, my goodness. These teams down here, look at this. 7-9, 7-9, 7-9. and, nine, seven and, nine, seven and nine. The tie took us to 7-8-1. and one. So we're in. The Ravens are the one. Cleveland is... No, the Jets should be the two. But we're in the playoffs, folks. In year one. Last time I simmed this first season, Cincinnati, I think I won one or two games. I still had the first pick overall. Uh, we just went 7-8-1 and one and made the playoffs. So the only real difference, honestly, uh, you know, the last time around, A.J. Green was cut. He was gone. Uh, and he didn't do anything for us. Geno Adkins made a big difference on defense. He was in the top performers every single week, almost every single week. Uh, so he really made a difference. And then Jordan Franks just had a ridiculous year. Um, so we're in the playoffs taking on the Jets. Uh, so the Jets went 11-5, and five, and that's kind of a shocker. For the Bengals and Jets to be making the playoffs, I don't know what's happening here. Uh, I guess some injuries, you know, Mahomes being out uh, really threw him off. Looks like Le'Veon Bell had a had a big year. Jeff Smith had a big year. So he had a West Virginia, Boston College. <laughs> He's out with allergies. In the, you're out with allergies in January. Are you allergic to snow? All right, but we're in the playoffs, guys. Let's check this out. Let's see what we get here. New York Jets are favored by three and a half. Let's sim this wild card week, and we're going to bow out in the first round. Take a look here. Oh, Von Bell started the game off right, and then they tried to catch up with a couple of field goals, and then uh, we couldn't do anything after that. Burrow went 5 of 23 with two interceptions, so you didn't really think it could get worse than what he did for most of the year, but that, I, I think Chris... 
could have done better than that, or Breeze. Breeze, I'm pretty sure you could go five for 23 with less than two picks. He's, he's got a rating of 3.4. Anybody in this chat right now could have done better than that. Mixon did nothing. None of the receivers. So we just didn't show up to this game. Other than Von Bell with the pick six, we did nothing there. So, but again, we, we really didn't belong in the playoffs, to be quite honest. A Burrow at 5 of 20 or whatever, he still shows up on the player performance. I mean, he's, the value per snap is pretty awful, uh, but he had a key play. And you can see the attitude, the awareness, the effort, but they were all there. The production was awful. Uh, but, you know, that season, whatever. I don't know what we were ever really going to do in that season. Uh, let's go on through the playoffs and see see what actually happens here. Let me get a quick little refill here on my brown beverage of unspecified brand. Uh, so, all oh, right, the playoffs come down here, right? Uh, Let's sim the division championships. It's like Tampa's moving on. Baltimore doing stuff and things. Look at Lamar. Seahawks and Jets. Conference championships. Seattle beat Tampa Bay and the Ravens took out the Jets. So Lamar and Russell Wilson going to do battle in the big one. Let's sim this championship, and your Baltimore Ravens and my boy, Lamar Jackson. Look at that, 20 for 29, 324 yards, two touchdowns. Let's check out the box score here in the championship game. Lamar, almost 70%, 130 quarterback rating. That's getting it done, folks. Mark Ingram almost had 100 yards. Mark Andrews. Is that Hollywood Brown? So the Ravens take home in the offensive player of the game here, Lamar Jackson. Defensive player of the game, Marlon Humphrey. Uh, four tackles, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovered. So your Ravens take home the championship in the 2020 season. Uh, we just got a couple of emails regarding injuries. We've already dealt with most of our um, contract stuff that we really wanted to get. So <laughs> look at my boy. MVP, Lamar. Playoff MVP, Lamar. Offensive MVP, Lamar. 5,100 yards, 50 touchdowns. Uh, where I, I want to go and... Um, uh, anyway, hold on. Joe Burrow actually got Offensive Rookie of the Year, so he couldn't even complete 50% of his passes. But he did throw for nearly 3,400 yards and 29 touchdowns. And the Defensive Rookie of the Year, also a Bengal, uh, Davis Gaither, the linebacker, who did show up. Uh, as a top performer a number of times, he almost had 100 tackles and 10 sacks. So, some really good young talent on this Bengals team. Uh, they're headed to the Pro Bowl here. I want to stop and go look. I, I want to see, you know, we saw, obviously, the, the passing numbers from Lamar. Uh, I would like to see all of the statistics for this year. So, obviously, I mean, the passing, 5,100 yards, that's ridiculous. Like, these guys that go for 5,000 yards passing, it's like Drew Brees and people like that. So, for Lamar to do it, it's just not even fair. Uh, you can see here, he only ran it for about 266 yards. Uh, so, uh, I'd be shocked, short of an injury, if Lamar Jackson's ever held to 266 yards, uh, at least, you know, in, while, his, <laughs> while his legs still function. Uh, so... You know that that might be something that needs to be tweaked. I know in some of the earlier builds of the game that the running back, uh, the quarterbacks rather, the quarterbacks were running it a little bit too much. So uh, maybe this is just some of that pendulum moving back and forth. Uh, maybe an area for improvement, or maybe it's just something I'm not seeing. Maybe it was just their offensive scheme because the the dude still threw for over five thousand yards. Uh, so uh, if you got a quarterback throwing for that much, maybe they just doesn't need to run. But he did have three touchdowns on the ground. Only a couple of really big runs, five fumbles. 
good-looking season for the Louisville product, Lamar Jackson. All right, so let's bounce back over to Cincy, uh, where we've got the Offensive Rookie of the Year, Joe Burrow. We're going to be moving on to the Pro Bowl. Go ahead and place him that. Let's advance. Maybe that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah, Lamar got it, but remember Mahomes was hurt. Mahomes missed like eight games, so it's really not a surprise there. Look at this. Look who is a pro bowler in his first season. That's your boy Joe Burrow from the Bengals. So Lamar, Cam Newton, Joe Burrow, Carson Wentz, Tom Brady at 43, and Russell Wilson. Uh, Billy Price actually made the Pro Bowl. So Billy Price, for anybody not that's not a big Bengals fan, he was an Ohio State Buckeye. Uh, he was either a first or second round draft pick a few years ago. Uh, pretty universally seen as a bust, but it looks like here he had a little bit of a revitalization. So let's move on down here. Yeah, that's what I wanted to see is whether or not Jordan Franks got in as a tight end. Uh, so all 885, 10 touchdowns, huge year for Jordan Franks. Uh, Davis Gaither makes the Pro Bowl as a rookie. So we got you know we got both the rookies of the year. They're both Pro Bowlers. And then Trayvon Henderson made the Pro Bowl. So another one that we just re-signed. So looking good there. We've got some young talent. This looks promising. If we fix the lines. So let's see if we can go and do that. Let's save right now. I don't want to lose anything that we've done here tonight. No Gronk. <laughs> well, you talking about the Pro Bowl, no Gronk? I mean, you saw what Franks did. Pretty good year. Can't go wrong there. What do I need to do here? Advance? Advance. I think I X'd out of that. Yeah, Burrow went one for one in the Pro Bowl. He beat 50% that time. Uh, let's see here. Franks got a couple of catches for 30 yards. Davis Gaither got three tackles, one for a lot. He got a sack. So the only one in the AFC with a sack. One, Only three players got sacks in that game, and Davis Gaither was one of them. So uh, nice Pro Bowl showing there for our guys. Burrow only got the chance to air it out once. Uh, it's the first time he's seen an actual offensive line all season that could block, but uh, he only got one opportunity. So we are going to end this season. Uh, shockingly good season. I think that we overachieved. I certainly think that we overachieved. Uh, but we are going to move on and see if we can get some help on these lines. We desperately need it. We're going to be pick. Wow. You make the playoffs, you pick late. So I've been used to picking one and two and three. And now we're all the way down at 19. But it's still a pretty good spot to grab yourself a relatively top flight lineman. Whether that's on the offensive or defensive line doesn't make a huge difference to me. Uh, staff signing. Hopefully I don't need to get engaged in this. I, I think all of our coaches were on more than one year. No, let's let's take a look at staff and make sure. I think that all of our guys are still signed. Yeah, uh, four year, oh zero years remaining. Juan Garrett. Let's negotiate with him. So he's making four a year. He'll take four and a half. Sure, whatever. So maybe we're overpaying a little bit here. Uh, we're certainly overpaying for Pierre Scott. But you know what? We won. So I'll fire him next year. I'll fire him next year. We don't need to do any staff signing, so. All right, free agency. Take another look at contracts real quick. So, we're at 72. We've actually got 27 million in cap status. So, and we could spend a good deal here. Let's see what's available in free agency. Oh, we got to do it via the free agency screen, which I think means probably going to need 
no, we're good right here. All right, so here are the big time free agents. And right up at the top, four offensive linemen. As far as, I think this is just rated uh, based on overall ability. So, I mean, if you could come in, we got, what, what is this? Highest paid players, Trey Wayne's a corner. I don't even remember seeing much of Trey Wayne's this past year. We only got three corners signed. <laughs> Yeah, Trey Wayne's, you know, a low overall rating, uh, but getting paid. What? It, so he's on his last year's salary. Hopefully, either his rating changes or his he starts showing up as a top performer, or he'll be out of here. Uh, we definitely need some corners, though. Uh, we got a lot of positions to fill out, but a lot of times I don't like doing too much of this prior to the draft. I like getting into. Yeah, Jason Kelsey. Uh, I'm not getting Adrian Peterson. Kelsey's a, a maybe. Uh, but I don't want to fill out too much of this before the draft because we've got seven players to bring in from the draft. So those seven will get us up to 44, and then we'll have six, seven, eight. We'll have nine left to fill uh, if I don't sign anybody. So what I do during this period is just go for those big fish. So if I grab Kelsey, well, let's just go check this out. Let's see, we got... Take a look at these ratings here. A handful of these guys look a little bit better. Suofilo, Hopkins looks all right-ish. The tackles look pretty brutal, so that's probably the first position we want to fix. Let's go check it out. So, Kelsey would be the, the biggest one. He's looking for like $8 million a year. For four years. He's 33 years old. So you got to figure, even if he's at 97 now, you know, he's going to be at like 95, 94 by the time the season actually starts. And then he's going to be, you know, he's going to be done in two or three years. So I don't know that, that that's necessarily where we want to go. Um, Mitchell Schwartz, on the other hand, he's a year younger, not quite as good. His pass blocking is quite a bit better, though. Uh, but he's a, he's a tackle, and that's what we absolutely have to have. And it's suggesting 6.1 for him. So let's go for Schwartz. Let's go. S Six point five. You know what? Because it's going heavy on the front end. Let's do let's do seven. We'll offer him seven a year. So it'll be a big hit the first year, and then it'll slowly drop off. Uh, four years. And that gets us a big-time tackle that can really, we know, you know, it's not a draft pick. We're not having to develop anybody. That I'm not sure, because I think Travis Kelsey's a tight end, right? Uh, I'm not sure if those two are related, Breeze. I don't know. But anyway, this would this would really, you know, we can drop this dude in at tackle and really cement that line, and then hopefully, uh, you know, we can we can spend some more money here. But let's let's get this offer out first, because that's a huge offer. Incognito at 38. There's no way in the world I'm making that offer. Let's clear these positions out, and then just look at guards. All right, now here is something a little bit more realistic. He's rated at 85, but he's only 27 years old. Let's take a look here. His pass blocking is not great. I mean, neither of these ratings are excellent. Um, look at the pass blocking over here. Zeitler, the former Bengal. Kevin Zeitler at 31 years old. You know, still rocking it. Yeah, he's a maybe because that pass blocking is crazy. If we want Burrow back there slinging it around, uh, he could get it done, but uh, Incognito's much too old. Pat Elfline? Elfline? Pat Elfline? No, the Buckeye. Uh, but he's a young guy. He's got a good rating here. Let's see what it suggests for him. Now, that is what we're talking about. 3.3. I'll definitely go above that. 
this kind of guy. Oh, hold on. I've actually got to click him and offer a contract. We're going three, three and three quarters. And we're going for many more years. You know what? That's a lot of years. Let's offer the guy four million. Why is the heavily front loaded wasn't working out exactly right? Let's submit that offer. All right, so that's two real big offers. That'd be 11, about 11 million average. In the first year, it's actually going to be quite a bit more. Uh, so that's some decent money, but still, we had 30 million. Uh, we can we can keep going with this, and I would like to see what is available at defensive end, which does not look quite as competitive. J.J. Watt's out there. Look at the rating on J.J. Watt. It's pretty rough. I don't know that there's a huge improvement available here. Uh, cornerbacks, we know we need to sign some. Now, here's some speed. Let's see what Dante Jackson's looking for. Yeah, this is what we're talking about. 25-year-old, looking for around $3 million. We'll go ahead and give him the 3-4. Uh, we'll leave it a little bit front loaded, not super. We'll stretch, see if we can stretch it out to five years. We'll give them an extra 100000 a year. He'll be a starter. All right, so three pretty big offers. We would really fix our offensive line, or at least take a big step toward that. You want to go Kelsey all the way? He's just a little bit old for what I'm looking for. Yeah, the draft is pretty cool. I'm interested to see how it's changed since the original version. I definitely want to get it to you today. I know last time we talked about it and I didn't do it, uh, but I'd like to today if we can. Uh, so let's just complete the current day and see what goes on here. Zeitler got signed. Sean Watson got signed. So here, you know, you're talking about uh, big signings. Uh, these are some pretty big signings. So we actually didn't land Mitchell Schwartz. He went to the Colts for almost $8 million a year. So that sucks. So we need to take another look at tackles. Because, uh, oh shoot, I keep forgetting that. Uh, no, tackles such a, a big area of need, and we got a ton of money. You know, let's... Let's take a look at these guys first and see if do we get any kind of information as to whether they're considering our offer. Dante Jackson. I bet there's probably a way to see, you know, what offers they're considering, what the best bids are. Uh, you know, you would think if other people are bidding more, they would come back to us and try to create a bidding war. Uh, if anybody knows where that setting is, I would imagine it exists. Let me know. Uh, if it doesn't exist, that's you know, a shame. But uh, So you know, back to our search for some kind of tackle. Uh, Moton? So this, his pass blocking is so much worse than the other guy. Man, that was a big, big loss uh, not getting that tackle that we had offered. He's this guy's looking for three six. We desperately need an improvement on the line. So I mean, I'll, I'll spend here. He's not asking for a lot. We're gonna go above what he's asking for because there's no way I want to lose him. Uh, let's go four years at like what was he asking three one. Uh, let's offer him three and a quarter. Actually, no, let's just offer him four. And let's definitely heavily front load that. All right. We've still got a lot of a lot of cap room seeing as how we couldn't land the tackle. So we've basically got another four or five million dollars to play with. So here's what the defensive tackles available look like. Nothing, well... 
Well, Justin Zimmer. These guys are relatively young. They're strong. Let's throw Kenny Clark at 25. Let's throw an offer out to Kenny Clark. What do you say? He's asking for a decent amount. We're willing to pay a decent amount. Let's offer him three and a quarter as a starter for four years. And then let's take a look at what we've got available at linebacker. So we're just looking for young players with some talent. This guy, ooh, he's asking for a decent chunk of change. I don't know that we're going that high. We've already got the offer out for a corner. Um, all right, let's just complete this current day. Like cor uh, guard, tackle, corner, defensive tackle. Nothing else is really jumping out at me. All right, so we still didn't sign anybody, and here we go. The Falcons stole that tackle also. You know, he only he was asking for like a maximum of 3-1. We went for 4, and they offer an extra 100000 I would have easily paid four and a quarter incognito signed didn't Zeitler already sign I thought Zeitler signed in week one and I know Mitchell Schwartz oh 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 this is the full recap so these were round one guys here's the round two guys okay got it it's advanced to round three back to the search for a tackle where's the bid on free agents So now we're really, I don't know that we can really improve that much. So his pass and run blocking are right at 70. Intelligence and strength are both around 75. Uh, let's see what these tackles on our roster look like. So strength is a little bit higher for both of them. Intelligence is much lower. Pass and run blocking is much lower on Prince. Uh, Williams is better. Williams is better. But uh, we could definitely still upgrade a starter. So we can still go out here and grab a starter if we can get... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep on clicking the wrong button. It's a bit on free agents. Clear this out. Grab ourselves a tackle. So we can go for Cameron Irving. Now, he's asking for significantly more money than the other guy. Which is interesting. Uh, Cam Robinson, on the other hand, a little bit younger, uh, pretty, he's much stronger. Intelligence is a little bit lower, but pass blocking and run blocking are pretty much right there, higher endurance, uh, and he's asking for a cheaper price. So let's go ahead. We can lock this guy down, I think. Let's go three and three quarters. You know, he's getting lucky here. Uh, he's getting the, uh, we already lost out on our first two options, and we desperately need a tackle kind of money here. Let's still heavily front load it though. So he's going to get paid up front. Players got to like that, right? I mean, even if he, I, I'm doing it to, to get rid of the salary obligation early, but you know, the players in, in the NFL, these contracts aren't guaranteed. So, uh, if we put all the money up front, they know they're going to get paid. So we still got a chance for a big upgrade at guard. We, we might want to We want to update this offer because he would be a vast improvement, right? 85 overall, real good strength, intelligence. Yeah, he'd be a big offer. Let's update this. I mean, let's give him five a year? How old is he? Let's offer another half a million. At four years. All right, let's complete this day. Oh, we got some. We got it. We got him. That did the trick. All right, so we got him. That tackle that wanted three million a year, they gave him over five million a year. So, I thought I was desperate, but the Colts were desperate for a tackle. They way overpaid that guy. At least in my opinion, they way overpaid him. 
All right, so we lost out on yet another tackle. Uh, and the game just brings us right back to the tackles, which is great. That's great. Donovan Smith still asking for quite a bit of money. Oof. What's Dawkins? Dawkins asking for a decent amount. You know, we can offer him the same. Uh, yeah, that that's fine. So we'll keep offering these tackles. Uh, we got to get one eventually, right? Did I just... Oh, that was the wrong one. Sorry. We didn't lose our tackle offer. We're still in on Cam, Cam Robinson. So a tackle, defensive tackle, and a cornerback. We're still in on those. We've still got $22 million remaining. Uh, I mean, we could, we could try to... Let's just... Let's put all positions up. Who's the best at? Who's the best out there? Kelsey's still available. Damn. Oh, big time wide receivers, fullback, safeties. Thinking about doing it, guys. I'm thinking about offering right here. Um, Who had already signed? I didn't already get a center, right? All I got was Elfline. All right. What the hell? He's 33 years old. We'll give you three years at seven and a half. See if that piques his interest. So we could really be rebuilding these lines here if, if some of these guys, if we can cash in on any of these offers. So we got Jackson, the cornerback. That'll be helpful. Let's go back to all teams, see who else signed here in round four. So Jason Kelsey ended up going to the Jets for $10 million a year. Best of luck to y'all. A lot of running backs. There's our signing. Jamon Brown, that's a Louisville Cardinal, I believe. Alex Kappa, J.J. Watt. All right, so we've still got these two offers outstanding. Uh, we still got 18 million in cap space as well. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and update both these offers. Uh, Cam Robinson, I'm definitely wait. We're going big here. We'd really like to get a tackle. And Kenny Clark will, will update you as well. Let's go two, three and a half. Round five. So we got our tackle. Thank you. Goodness gracious. We got to tackle Cam Robinson. That'll work. Uh, where do the round five signings start? Quite a few of them. So Adrian Peterson finally signed. We're just looking here to see if Kenny Clark signed with the Dolphins, so we lost that. So let's jump over and check our emails. I think it'll tell us uh, what's going on. All right, so we knew we knew those guys declined. So here's some draft sleepers. Gordon Gordon Hayward. I thought that dude was playing for the Jazz. Uh, was it the no the Celtics, right? Where is he now? I don't think he's even with the Celtics anymore. Alright, so we got some draft sleepers here from our coaches, whatever. Are you sure you want to complete scouting? Nope. Well, let's go scout the draft. So, honestly, I have no idea how this is so, oh projection that's right it's sort of by projection so I mean, you can see here who's who's projected to go in the top 10 but um oh so gordon hayward went from the jazz to the celtics to the nfl free agency uh interesting i imagine he could probably make a good db or maybe a maybe one of those underneath wide out kind of guys get some bubble screens you know so, 
uh, here in the draft, we're definitely focusing, still focusing on offensive line. We did get a tackle and a guard, but it's still brutal. We could still upgrade the other side of it, even if it's just with younger players. Uh, but I would also definitely take some talent on the defensive line or at linebacker. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to turn down talent anywhere, but you know, to be quite honest, uh, I don't have a great feel for how to do this, so we're actually just going to auto-scout it. So it's going to set up interviews with these guys, scouting with these guys, and we can go ahead and advance past the scouting. And now here we are to the draft, which I've been promising you guys I was going to bring you. And we're there. <laughs> so let's check it out. Uh, let's see. Now it should start. Yeah, this is cool. I'm not going to talk over this. Adjust your volume as needed. This is a cool, this is a cool thing. Check it out. I get hyped for that. I watch it. I've I've gone through like three or four drafts now. I watch that every time, even though it's like the same thing and just like the different names. But for one, it gives you. Uh, I mean, it's there's some usefulness to it because it's telling you who some of the top prospects are, which is awesome. Uh, but second, like, it just gives me it gives me goosebumps, man. Even though it's you know, even though it's just a, a game and a sim or whatever, it, it gets me hyped too. So uh, that's my one of my favorite features in this. It's really awesome. That's why I wanted to bring you guys a draft so bad last time and didn't get to do it. I was so disappointed. But here it is. There's the intro, uh, which is one of the coolest around. Um, i got to calm down from the hype before I can even get set and figure out what I need to do. I think what we'll do is... I think if I hit CPU pick, it'll just pick once. But I also don't want to screw up and miss my first pick. So as much as I would like to to go through like one by one on the first handful of picks, I think I'm just going to go straight to the next human pick. All right, so can we do a draft recap here? So there you go. Wow. A defensive tackle went first overall been a while since that sort of things happened there was uh well, the guy from lsu that went to kansas city like seven eight nine years ago but i don't even think if he was first overall but anyway a defensive tackle goes first overall daniel mckenzie to the lions where's the huh. so heavy on the defense here They've gone heavy on defense. The first quarterback doesn't come off the board until the 11th pick. Then right back to defense. I guess everybody's trying to improve the lines. Uh, maybe it's just a line-heavy draft. Um, oh, I want to be out of this screen. Uh, I'm still figuring out all the screens. I, I should be able to pop right back in. All right, so we can jump over here into our war room, and this will give us an idea. I believe, 
now let me check so this is actually giving us like 35 pages so this was one of the issues that that I was originally having with um, you know the, the older builds but this looks really really tight now um, so you can see right up here are the suggestions that each of our coaches are giving us. So the offensive coordinator is suggesting we draft a backup quarterback for the future with a first-round pick. That's insanity. Uh, the head coach and the defensive coordinator are both suggesting that we draft Steven Davis, a defensive tackle. So you can see here on, on the projections, James Acker is actually the top rated defensive tackle and you can see over here the coach grades that you get now what I have noticed is it seems like uh, whatever your coach tends toward like if he's a more offensive coach he's gonna get better ratings on the offensive players the defensive coaches are gonna get better ratings on the defensive players so I'll put a little bit more credence into this defensive coordinators rating here he's really liking James Acker but he also suggested Steven Davis so I'm really interested to see what his rating for Davis is uh, but you can take a look here. It gives you some scout grades, physique, athleticism, intangibles, scouted attributes. Look at the certainty. They're 95% sure they're scouting on this guy. Uh, so, you know, he's a leader. He works hard. He's competitive. He's a team player. Sportsmanship. Values money at 100. You're going to have to pay the man. All right. So he's rated like a 30 and a 22 and all that good stuff. Uh, let's. Where is this defensive tackle that everyone wants us to draft? What we can do is clear positions and just check out the DTs. He's not on the first page of defensive tackles. Oh, I was just overlooking him the whole time. My bad. I'm glad that not everybody in chat's shouting, so I guess you all overlooked it too or whatever. Now, see, the rating on him's worse across the board. His intangibles are worse across the board. The certainty's a, a hair lower. Why are they suggesting somebody that they all three rated worse? I mean, he's a very much a leader, very much a team player. Great morale. Only 20 years old. Where, you know, you, you look there. I mean, Acker's 24. So you basically sign him to his rookie contract, get him into his prime, and then he's good for one contract and that's it. Whereas this guy, you know, you can sign him through his rookie contract and through an extension and he's still going to be in his prime. Let's go back to all positions. Let's just see what's out there. Big time center here. So you can see here the, the offensive coordinator is giving him the better grade. Uh, you know, he's going to average out a little bit lower because Pierre Scott doesn't care for him. His personality ratings are all a little bit lower. Look at the certainty 100%, strength A, uh, good pass blocker. Good athleticism, good football IQ. Now, what I could definitely use would be like a defensive end. Well, I mean, shoot, even a tackle. But well, he's he's also 24, Eduardo Woods. Now he's got some slightly higher grades there. Still nice certainty, nice blocking, pretty good strength. Dumber than a rock. Like he's not dumb as a rock, he's dumber an F on intelligence. It's not necessarily what you want to see out of a tackle. Maybe we could stick him at right tackle. I don't know. All right, so there's, you know, Mark Wiggins, the quarterback. I mean, they got some good certainty on him, but he's, he's an accurate passer. It's not bad. None of these ratings are jumping off the board at me. You know, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's not out here like, uh, let's see, close of view. Oh, all right. Go back into the war room quick. The clock just started. Uh, I don't. Uh, hopefully, I'm not actually on a clock here because it's going to take some time to go through this stuff and see what we actually 
like what we really want to do. Uh, what I would love to see is a defensive end that can really get after the quarterback. Now look at these personality ratings, just jumping off the board, leadership, work ethic, competitiveness. He's 24, so he's a little bit older. Uh, strength is a B minus. Speed is a B minus, so the speed's good. Physique, technique's not great. A plus intangibles. Uh, so you know you're getting a good guy here. And then the ratings, again, you know, nothing jumping off the board. We'll see if we can find somebody's ratings that do jump off the board if there is one. Do we have we don't really have any linebackers? And you can see just projection wise, you know, these guys are projected to be toward the top. All right, let's take another look through here. 20s and 30s. Take a look at this running back. Mm -hmm. Burnett, pretty good. Woods probably has the highest ratings. Although, this fellow's actually got some pretty decent ratings as well. His intangibles aren't great. Woods are a little better. Uh, cornerback here. Hmm. About the same kind of ratings. We've looked at the cornerback. Mr. Fain. Pretty similar ratings. Nice personality. Good certainty. Good hands for a defensive tackle. Maybe this is one of those dudes you line up at fullback and, and try to get him into the end zone. Some offensive plays. I don't know. Uh, where were we? Right in this general vicinity. Van Meter's got a little bit higher ratings here as a running back. But we do not want to draft a running back right now. Davis, the one they all want me to draft. He's a good tackler. Physique, athleticism. And he's just so young, I think, is probably why they like him. But Moniz is pretty young as well. Oh, those are some brutal ratings. I mean, for a for a top uh, prospect, you see, most of them are like right around like thirty, and then twenty and twenty from the other two coaches. And he's a little bit lower, and it'll just keep getting lower as you go down. David Martin, the head coach, didn't care for him. Some decent ratings for a wideout. So, you know, really, it comes down to it comes down to philosophy, I think. And, you know, I already talked about it. Uh, I go for the I go for the offensive and defensive lines uh, and I'm going for I'm going for youth. So with everything else being relatively equal, uh, I think it really comes down to either Elmer Burnett. He's got some decent ratings. An incredible ceiling, a strength, dumber than rocks. Uh, you know, not too shabby there. And then Stephen Davis, the other nice young defensive tackle, uh, also has pretty good ratings. And, you know, he's not really lacking for anything. So, I mean, if everything else is equal, let's just roll with what our coaches want to do. I realize... You know, that was a whole lot of hemming and hauling to just do exactly what's suggested. But uh, let's let's beef up that defensive line right out of the gate. All right, so let's jump on up to the second round. So there was our first round pick. We're going straight to the defensive line, grabbing a defensive tackle. Uh, maybe, I'm assuming Geno Atkins is still under contract. So hopefully that's somebody that we can... Uh, sit right there next to Geno Atkins. I didn't show you that little bit. These guys will all kind of weigh in on the pick that you just made. Uh, so if you want to see the analyst reaction or whatever, uh, you can do that. I haven't been too impressed by it. It's mostly just like, it, it's mostly just based on their projection. So regardless of your uh, your coach's ratings or, or how you're looking at them, if they're rated to be a first rounder and you get them in the first round, they'll say, oh, that was a good pick. And if they're ready to be a first rounder and you get them in the third, they'll be like, oh, they got a steal. And then if, you know, obviously if they're projected to be a late rounder and you jump on them, uh, they, they crap all over you. Uh, so that's about the extent of what these announcers do. But, all right. 
back to the war room. Let's see what our coaches are looking at now. Let's see who's still available. So all these running backs still just sitting around. The, uh, the offensive coordinator still wants us to go after another quarterback. I don't know why. Uh, the head coach and the DC are wanting us to go after some defensive ends, which I'd be more than happy to grab. Let's see how they grade it out. So you can see here they're going to drop off a little bit, not too awfully much. He's got some speed there. Uh, but all these, you know, physique, athleticism, those are all kind of garbage. Christensen is right here. So he's got much better ratings up. He's got much better ratings across the board. Uh, except for over here, all the coaches graded him a little bit lower. And he doesn't quite have that speed. 61281. All right. Uh, let's first take a look at this tackle, see if there's anything doing here. So his, his run and pass blocking are both pretty bad, but he's got really good strength and agility, not great intelligence. Uh, pretty good across the board up here, except for technique. And then decent grades. So... Hmm. What do we have at guard and center? So nothing really great there. Nothing really great there. Some pretty decent... Again, hands. I don't get it. So here's a run blocker with some strength, some intelligence. He's got football IQ, his intangibles. We didn't interview him. So we're not getting that. We're not getting these ratings here. Uh, not super athletic and not a whole lot of certainty. But that looks like a guy could stick at right tackle. And he's 22 years old. So I'm definitely interested in Casper. Let's take a look here and see if we get any kind of ridiculous steals at running backs. I mean, we're losing Geo, so we could pair somebody like that with Mixon. But at the end of the day, oh, look at Van Meter still there. Van Meter got some really good grades. So we could get some really good athletes here, but we already have some pretty good athletes across the board. And I just think running backs, you can find them. Yeah, the extent of what real announcers do. You're absolutely right, random test. That's about all the real announcers do. They figure out what the projection is, and, you know, it, you're right. Long story short, you're right. Uh, I kind of like William Casper. Smart, plays with good instincts. He's a good run blocker. Hopefully the pass blocking will come. He's intelligent and strong. Uh, he's got good physique, not the most athletic guy in the world, but, I mean, he's a right tackle. Just get, push him out of the way. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna go out and draft this tackle. So let's close this view. And it, it, you can see here what they, what they say. I didn't look at his... Um, I didn't look at his projection before I did it, but... You can guess what his projection was based on the decent selection. They picked up a guy that'll help their team out. So that's a he got picked about where he was projected to go. If I'd have picked one of those running backs that were like first round projections, they'd all be like, oh, what a steal. Moving on. All right. Now these running backs are still available. They were first round projections. They're still available. And they looked good. So he's got a B minus on strength, A minus on speed. So we're, we're going running back here, guys. Whether it's Lovett, it, he's got his head on straight, takes care of teammates. 
these descriptions, I think these are dynamic. I think they change each time, but we can check. Very competitive. But he's, he's pretty strong and really fast with decent agility. Van Meter is a little older. Uh, his strength is worse. His agility is much better. But his speed's not good. So, I mean, if you're not strong or fast, I don't really know what you're doing. So, I think we jump up here and grab Russell Love. And this is what I'm talking about. You, you grab this guy who... You know, teams may have been looking at in the first round, and we're going to grab him in the third. So that's what you can do at running back. We, we were able to address a pass rusher. We were able to address uh, our tackle position. And now here we are still grabbing a pretty good running back. Actually, wait a second. Wait. Everybody is telling us to draft Christensen now. Oh, we drafted Casper in the last round, right? We took a defensive tackle, then, a, then the offensive tackle. Now, Christensen, who was the pick last time, is still out there. I would really like to get this guy right now. But if all three of the coaches are saying Christensen. What do, what do you all think? What do we think in chat? Love it or Christensen? We got Joe Mixon for four years at $3 million a year. Having another runner would help. But we don't really have any defensive end. I didn't realize this guy was still here, obviously. And there's still six running backs with top two round projections. Uh, any feedback from the chat? I know, I, I know I'm delayed a little bit, so I try to give you guys some time. Yeah, love it's a little younger. Yeah, Christensen's a defensive end. That's the thing. is He's a, he's a defensive end that had a second-round grade, and the coaches wanted to get him last round, and he's still around. And if you look here, we got six running backs in the top eight, ten players available. He's the only defensive end on this page. All right, since everybody says love it, uh, I'm going to draft Christensen. <laughs> oh, man. All right, next human pick. I don't care what you guys say. Uh, I mean, I don't care about what the announcers say. I definitely care about what chat says. Uh, the announcer is not so much. Now, let's go check out the war room. We're here in the fourth round. Uh, so, we've still got this running back who was a borderline first-round pick. Still out there. A couple of guys that were projected to go in the second round. So, let's take a look at some of them, see what see what they look like. So, he's strong. Not a whole lot else, not a whole lot else going on there. He's nice and young. Got a cornerback here. Very agile, not that fast, not great grades. <sighs> kind of the same here. He's got good technique, really good technique. He's a really good tackler. Uh, we need you to be able to be fast and agile and cover people, though, if you're going to be a corner. This fellow, decent ratings. Nothing going on over here. He can run block out of the backfield. You know, we're getting late. We're getting late in the draft. You know, to some degree, we can just fill needs, and I know we need a lot of cornerbacks. Did we already click on Christie? John Jong? Nice agility. Nice technique. Pretty bad grades from the coaches.
All right, so the coaches are wanting us to go for another defensive end, but I also kind of want a corner. And this running back doesn't impress, right? He's got some strength. You know, let's see if we can grab a steal. Once you get once you get past the first three rounds, I mean, it's it's pretty much a crapshoot. Uh, they're looking for backups, Chris. I, I think I lost one of my backup quarterbacks, so they're just looking for a backup. <laughs> Draft on name alone. Yeah, you might be right. Uh, but, yeah, at this point, it's kind of a crapshoot, so – uh, if we can grab a guy that was projected to be a borderline first round pick, let's just go ahead and do it. And and now here we go. You know, Diaz and Christie are both still available, as are all of the guys that the coaches keep suggesting. So let's take another look at Diaz and Christie. So he's athletic, good technique, good and in, good in intangibles. Sorry, uh, agile tackles. And the speed's all right. The ratings aren't great. His ratings aren't much better. His agility is awful. His speed's slightly better. Let's grab Diaz. All right, so they still want us to go heavy. The head coach has been asking us to draft Luis Perez for like three rounds now. So I think I'll go ahead and do that. You can, I think you can just click here and draft Luis Perez. Next human pick. Yep. The head coach wants a new kicker. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Uh, the OC wants Bruce Greenfield. Let's go ahead and shoot. Let's go ahead and draft him. Let's make our OC happy. Now on to the seventh. Oh, was that the seventh pick? Last four picks. Yeah, we're all good, right? Well, the Dolphins. Yeah, I think I can just leave the draft screen. And advance. All right, let's take a look at this roster, guys. <laughs> take a look at this roster. So look at the overall on that running back we took. 88. Coming in looking like our best running back. I don't know if that'll... I don't know if that rating will hold. Look at the speed, though. Uh, so we'll see if that holds up. If that holds up, what do we take him in? The third or the fourth? Does it say? Fourth round, 19th pick. Looking like an 88 overall. Looking like the probably the best rating on the team, right? Fourth round rookie, best player on the team. Uh, we'll see if that holds. I don't know. You know, I, I just haven't played this game enough to know how accurate these scout ratings are and and how well they hold, how how dynamic they are. And you can see there quite a bit of speed. Anderson's got similar speed. Mixon's a little lower. Where's he getting all this overall rating? Like, where is he blowing everybody out of the water? Ex is that acceleration? I, I assume there's uh, a lot more stats that aren't showing up on the screen. Let's take a look at our other draft picks. Uh, Come down here, Casper, showing up as a 75. So... You know, him along with Robinson are looking. Whereas last year Jonah Williams was by far the best off he period best offensive lineman on the team. Uh, our free agent pickup and a second round rookie tackle, uh, looking like they're in line to take starting positions at the tackle. So that would be nice for us. Uh, as far as pass blocking, you know Jonah Williams is still the best pass blocker. He's actually. Pretty good run blocker. Casper's a heck of a run blocker. Uh, but Casper's very obviously a right tackle, whereas we'll let Cam Robinson or Jonah Williams run that left tackle. At center, Trey Hopkins 
I mean, he's got a, a pretty decent overall rating, as does Chris Reed. And then, you know, the guards, obviously, are a big free agent pickup with an 85 here. Pat Elfline. Uh, Suofalo is at a 76. So just look at that offensive line. 85, 76, 75, 75, 75. Whereas last year, Trey Hopkins had a lower rating. Uh, Jonah Williams was our best offensive lineman at 73. Now our worst is a 75. So, you know, that's definitely an improvement. Uh, Elfline is the huge improvement. Uh, but a couple of a couple of guys got better, and then we brought in a couple. So uh, should be more consistent there. Hopefully that opens it up for Mixon, uh, as well as Roberts, who we just drafted, who's looking really good. Uh, take a look here at our – look at Tyler Boyd. 85 overall for Tyler Boyd right now. Whew. Man, that's looking nice. Uh, take a look here. Corners, we drafted Diaz relatively late. He's not got a great rating, only a 70. Uh, Dante Jackson looking good. Uh, not a whole lot else there. Corner. Uh, Davis Gaither, obviously our pro bowler, our rookie of the year. Really the only standout that we have at linebacker. So here's Steven Davis, the rookie, also pushing 79. The guy, if you think about where the, the roster was last year and where these overall ratings were, they were so low. Yeah, I've been saving along the whole way. Uh, so 79 for Davis there, our first rounder. You know, jumping. Oh, we did not re-sign Geno Atkins. So I don't know if that's a mistake or not. Uh, Ratings-wise, Davis blows him out of the water. He blows all of them out of the water. Even Atkins was only like a 72. But but Atkins kept showing up on the, the top player list, so... Uh, maybe a mistake because he was performing well, but he was a veteran. He would have cost a lot of money. Uh, you know, right now on the spot, if I could trade that Cam Robinson, the tackle that we signed in free agency, if I could get Geno Atkins back for the same money, I'd do it. But I don't know if that was if that's even possible or a thing. But uh, defensive tackle, we've got a good one. Now we're gonna have to go sign a couple more just to fill this out. Defensive end, Christensen as a rookie, looks all right. You know, he, once again, he's our best player. You know, so if we've got, what is it, three, maybe four p- positions where the guys that we just drafted are our best player at the position. And Perez was a later pickup. He's, he'll suffice, I suppose. So there you go. That's what our roster looks like after one year. If we take a look at position counts. Oh, no, roster management's what I wanted to see. Uh, we're at 47 out of 53. We need six more players. Uh, we got about $5 million, so we could go about a million of players. So we can get some you know, some decent veterans. We don't have to go league minimum here. Uh, I think that, you know, I think this is a decent a decent looking improvement. But Burrow, wasn't he 76 last year? Did he go up two overall? So we'll just take a look at this. Our, our quarterback is is young but has played well running back if you look at the overalls like if these ratings are accurate our running backs are legit as could be uh tight ends we know jordan franks was a pro bowler we got uzama back we got drew sample back wide outs void looking like a standout for sure uh we re-signed auden tate we still got willis uh we're all right there i think we're we're still young there Guard, obviously, the huge improvement with Elfline. Uh, Hopkins got better. We got much better at tackle. We got much better at defensive tackle. We solidified defensive end. I don't want to say we got better. Linebacker and the backside of that defense, I don't guess we really made any huge moves. Um, But that was... I don't want to say that that was a strength. I mean, Sean Williams is good. Von Bell's good. Trayvon Henderson was good across the board that they were solid enough so we didn't have to do too much back here i think that this team is whereas last year i think we overachieved going seven eight and one making the playoffs i think this year hopefully we can do exactly that if not a little bit more consistent i certainly want to see improvement out of burrow uh, but I, I think that you know something like a 500 record this year should be the expectation hopefully 
maybe still a little bit below, you know, maybe six and ten or something. Uh, but this is such a young team. Uh, how many guys, how many older guys up in their thirties do you see through here? They're, we just don't have them. This is a young team; they can really grow together. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. We still got some free agency to go, uh, but this is actually round six of free agency right after the draft. This is where we started the stream, so we got through one full year. I'm gonna save it here, guys. I really appreciate y'all watching. I'm gonna jump out of here. We'll get back to this soon. We're hooked up now. You know, we're we're out of that early access. We're into the we're into the full retail version of the game. So uh, we're gonna get it going now. I got this save up and running. Got the mods up and running. We're good to go. I'll try to bring you some more of this, uh, as well as some more Draft Day Sports College basketball as soon as possible. But for now, I really appreciate you guys stopping by. I hope you got a good overview of the pro football game here in its retail version. And I uh, hope you all have fun, and I'll see you all next time.